Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Velhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu aşrafil mursalin. Seyyidina ve Mevlana Muhammed Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem bi madadikum min nazarikum seyyi resul kerim ya habibul azim. İnşallah ati Allah ati rasul ve ulul amri minkum. And there always a reminder from myself and abdukul ajisa daifa miskina zalim wa jahal and by the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence and we took a path in which to be nothing. That Allah's rahmah and mercy to be upon us and to keep us under that rahmah and that mercy. So now we'll take a couple questions for the meditation and tafakkur and always reminder that these are above PhD understandings of Islam and spirituality and it's not something you hear and understand, it's something that you hear, you write and to be a student of the way. That if you're not writing it there's no way you're learning it. So it's just an entertainment for you to just listen, watch presents or on the internet. These are very deep realities that if you're a student of the way then you write every single word that being brought out of these realities. As you write these angels, kiram al-Qatibin that make the, the noble scribes, what gives their nobility is the beatific realities that they write upon the book of the servant. As you move your hand it's like a photocopy machine that written on your book. As soon as you provide a movement the malaika are writing and they write on the eternal kitab of the servant and it begin to change the reality of the servant because what's written on their kitab is for all of eternity. It changes the rizq, it changes the energy, changes the lights, changes every light that Allah is going to be bestowing upon the soul of that servant. So means that to be a student of the way and the way is of a very high level of reality. It's not something just easy that we heard it, we went and we go because we keep saying it and then you'll find out later when you talk with people, are you doing this? You say, what? Doing what? The tafakkur? So, how do you do tafakkur? <laughs> So that, <laughs> that's just entertainment for myself. I'm just talking here for the purpose of entertaining myself and, and Haji Shamaj. But for those whom are interested in being a student of the way then they took a way in which to be a student inshaAllah. We have a couple questions for tafakkur and then we close for tonight. One of the questions, Sayyidi, um, for a beginner what is a good amount of time to make drink the <laughs> For a beginner inshaAllah it's a few minutes that don't make something so heavy that you just don't want to continue it. To do something light and consistent is better than to do something heavy and keep dropping it. That it has to be a spiritual dress in which it's not so heavy you want to dump it and never do it again. You try to do everything light and consistent. So that the consistency is what Allah is looking for. And then as soon as you're consistent in that amount of four or five minutes after every salah connecting your heart, the whole of salah is the realities of tafakkur because the salah is a means in which to reach to the Holy Kaaba. That you're doing all of what Islam has prescribed to you in the salah. You have to do your shahada. You have to do your, your, your washing, you have to do your zakah because you're stopping everything, Mawlana Shaykh teaching, you're stopping from working so that's a zakah, you're, you're giving charity. As soon as you stop and take a half hour of salah you could be working and making money, that's considered a, a zakah at that time. And you're fasting because you can't eat during your salah and it's a, a pilgrimage to Allah's Kaaba because you have to face the direction of the Kaaba. So you have all of Islam in that one salah. So the tafakkur in its reality is all the salah. So it means then 
this is a principle of our belief, the entire foundation of the belief on how to connect your heart, how to be nothing, how to make your salah and connecting your heart that I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi let me to be at the Holy Kaaba, let me to be praying at that Kaaba that I'm nothing and let me be with the Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and you said these are the best of company. You even make tafakkur on the words of what you're saying in your salah. As salaamu alayka ayyuhan Nabi, did you see Prophet You're making a salah in, in your tahiyyat, as salaamu alayka ayyuhan Nabi. So means Prophet head is, his, his back of his head is not facing you because Allah wouldn't give you words to recite that would be bi adab, it has to be the best of adab. So then Allah is saying, how come you recite but you don't even understand what you're saying? So you're saying in tahiyyat, as salaamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, so Prophet must be always looking at his nation in their salah, always. Now if you don't see Prophet this is your problem. But to know Prophet sees you and that Allah is making you to give your greetings in present tense, not past tense. Not salaamu alaykum, salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Rasulullah and salaamu alaykum ibadullahi salihin. Because some may be present and many may not be present at that level but even Allah wants you to know that ibadullahi salihin are also facing you. When do they stop facing you? If Allah has no time and has asked you to pray five times a day to cover your whole yawm, your whole day, when is it a time in which Prophet is not facing you? Your soul is always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is always facing Prophet and Ibadullahi Salihin are always facing you. Now you don't see it. So this is not something people make up, it's in the words of our most basic usul is the salah. And Prophet says, if you don't make salah you're outside of your belief. So it's the foundation of our entire being, we're praying but we're not really thinking about what we say when we pray. So one is that, oh my gosh, Ya Rabbi I'm facing Prophet and I don't see it and I don't feel it. And Ibadullahi Salihin that all oh, these pious souls, they're staring at me. Why Allah wants Prophet to be staring at your soul in your namaz and why Ibadullahi Salihin and all the pious souls? So that the nazar of Prophet to be on his nation. That they're going to pray and their prayer counts as nothing without you watching them. Because he's the great intercessor. That when our souls are praying the nazar of Prophet must be watching that salah. And that's why Prophet said, if my nation's amal is presented to me, if it's good I say, alhamdulillah, if it's bad I ask, Ya Rabbi stafi. He asked for forgiveness. So then Prophet responsible, the nazar is responsible upon their salah to clean it, to wash it and to present it to Allah pure and purified. It's like a pardah between creation and entering into the Divinely Presence. We don't understand that until we understood meditation, tafakkur, contemplation. Whatever it is that we want to call it in which you stop and contemplate that what are these words that I'm saying, what is it that I'm trying to achieve, what's happening in the reality of my being, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, if I cannot make the fakr after every salah then which salah is best to pray, to do meditation after? All the, all the salahs are, are, are blessed so the meditation will be most powerful at the fajr time and maghrib time. Means that this moment of faraj and tahajjud and fajr is a birth, 
is a birth of a day in which three veils of darkness are being lifted and there is a, a nijat and a salvation for creation. When the servant is in tafakkur from tahajjud to fajr all the way to the rising of the sun, there's a tremendous energy that being released. Salamun hiya hatta mitla al fajr means that there's a salam from Allah addressing the souls. And that's why Allah we said in the talk before, be like a bird, have love in your heart like a bird, the hadith of Prophet And the attribute of a bird is, is always in praising and zikr. And the praising of the zikr of the bird is so powerful that the angels carry the bird into the sky and fly because nobody could believe that it's the aerodynamics of their movement that actually making them to fly because mankind tried to copy that and they all crashed. So move your arms too and <laughs> see if Allah will let you fly. No, but you don't even have to move your arms. If you're pious and Allah finds sincerity within you, your soul flies everywhere. So be like the birds and make the zikr of Allah Say even the dove zikr, when the ayatul Qur'an where Allah said, remember me and I remember you, <laughs> Yeah, so Mawlana Shaykh said, Shaykh Nazim said, the, z- the zikr of a dove and why this earth thinks the dove is a symbol of peace because it's actually reciting Ayatul Kareem to remind insan what Allah asked, remember me and I remember you in a higher place. And that is the zikr of the dove. So the zikr of all these birds are all different secrets. But their characteristic Prophet said, be like that, that all day long they're making zikr and as a result they're flying. And the servant also can fly with his soul, he doesn't need his body to fly and then they look like a magician because they have those fake ones that pretend like they're flying in the air but there's a piece of metal that goes on the ground <laughs> into their sleeve. Yeah, because they can't do the zikr of Allah so do it through zikr. That you make your zikr praising upon Allah have a heart in which is so powerful and a mind that is, is you've battled your mind to shut it off. Because the bird never thinks, oh my god I'm 5,000 feet in the air and I'm going to die right now because God forgot me and has complete reliance on Allah and busy itself with his zikr and is flying as a result. So then when do the birds sing the most? If they came at fajr they beat you. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said, if I hear the birds I know that fajr's already taken place. So they tried to get up before the birds. The birds are reminding them and reciting at fajr time. And when did the birds recite again? Is maqrib time. Here there's 10,000 crows in, in the Burnaby, it's the scariest sight you can imagine, maybe more than 10,000. But it's a sign and all over the world at maqrib time the birds all come and they face the sun and they start praising and crying on Allah to protect them through the difficulty of night time. In the daytime they praise Allah for this beatific day and the, and the glory of what Allah is about to bestow upon them. So if we live a life just following the idea and understanding of even the birds, they're teaching us. So most powerful will be the, f- the fajr and the asr to maqrib. So right before maqrib they're meditating on the power that's coming onto this earth as a death of the day, inshaAllah. Is that it? (laughs) And then one more, one more nice juicy one. (laughs) Um, Are there any specific recitations for healing during meditation if someone's having pain in the body like back pain or eye pain or is there something they can recite specifically during their meditation or what should they do? Yeah, for, <clears throat> for pain everything going to be something different. There's a different salawat different for different ailments and, and different difficulties that are coming. But the most important is that when they're 
in a state of tafakkur, they're meditating, they're breathing is to visualize where that pain is and asking Allah to send a light, to send an energy to take away that difficulty. So it means the whole dialogue in tafakkur and contemplation is a Ya Rabbi grant me your power, your light, grant me your energy, your qudra, that grant me a light in which my light is, is not sufficient, not strong enough to protect me, grant me your satisfaction. That Allah bestow lights and energy upon the soul, that is a resolving everything. That is the knowledge, that is the healing, that is the sustenance. If Allah grants a power to your soul, why would you need to ask for money? Because He gave the most premium part of you a reality. You don't ask for the, the, the side pieces, you know, give me some cash, I need like this, I need like this. No, no, you say, Ya Rabbi grant me a light and ridha upon my soul. If Allah is satisfied and He enter, begin to send a qudra and a light upon your soul and you feel it, you feel an energy coming, you feel energy while you're breathing, you feel yourself heating up, then Allah is giving you access to now a Divinely source of lights and energies that begin to dress your soul. If those lights dress you, they take away the sicknesses that Allah wants to be taken away by because of deficient energy, the rest Allah wants to stay. You can't take away what Allah wants there to be in your character and any rizq and sustenance that's not coming well it would be taken away by the light that's resting upon your soul. So the most premium request from Allah is, Ya Rabbi grant me a light and energy upon my soul that you be pleased with me, take away any darkness and fill me with every light. So that Allah sends the best of blessings and they resolve every type of difficulty. After the meditation then the zikr throughout the day should be salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad That for you to recite a du'a and for you to recite something that's the assumption that you're already in a correct place with Allah Because you think that your Asmullah is going to count, you think all these recitations are going to count. The more perfected understanding is that I'm in this because of my deficiency. So the zikr that's most powerful for me is salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Immediately Prophet nazar is upon you, sending 10 salawats upon you means Prophet is resolving your case through your salawats and that I'm a weak servant and what Allah ordered the only zikr that Allah ordered, in Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi And that's enough that Allah and the angels are praising and praying upon with the secret of that reality. That salawat is enough to take away every type of difficulty and deficiency inshaAllah. Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.